Mazda and Toyota's new manufacturing plant in Alabama is now open for business. Nissan launches a gorgeous vehicle that we're not going to be able to get here stateside. And Subaru announces an Onyx edition of the Subaru Ascent. We're over at mynbc15.com. We have a new exclusive video from this news source. They got inside the new Mazda and Toyota plant down in Alabama, which they're looking for jobs to be filled there. So if you need a job and you are okay with living in Huntsville, Alabama, which is a very nice place to live, by the way, 4,000 jobs they're trying to fill. You can go to this page right here if you want to apply. I'll put it down in the description below. It'd be pretty neat to work for a Toyota manufacturing plant. You see all sorts of cool things, learn the culture, have a good paying job, good benefits but I'm not, I'm not monster.com. So let's, is monster.com even around? Am, am I showing my age? Is it indeed nowadays? My gosh. But thanks to this article, we have new information here. We have new colors that we didn't know about. So when I was in Plano, Texas, we saw the Corolla Cross for the first time. We had white and this kind of grayish blue color, which was really cool looking. But now we have confirmation of kind of a, a glossy red, a dark forest green color, um, a blue color that looks kind of like ultrasonic blue mica on the Lexus end. So that's pretty cool. And they're using Mazda's paint technology. So check this out. Uh, we have confirmation from that video that Mazda is lending their paint technology and application process called Aquatech to this Mazda Toyota plant in Alabama. And it is better for the environment, uses less energy or produces less CO2, pr produces less uh, what they call VOC, which is volatile organic compounds in the air. Uh, so that is pretty cool. So we're going to have your Corolla Cross painted by a Mazda technology, essentially. So I thought that was interesting. These two are going to continually be working closer and closer together, especially with the new platforms that Mazda has coming out the rear wheel drive in line six. I do hope, I don't, I don't know if it's going to happen, but I do hope that we would see it uh, some sort of that technology flow into either the Toyota or Lexus lineup eventually as well. But hey, we're getting Toyotas painted with Mazda technology. I thought that was neat. We're going to keep moving. Uh, there is a new Nissan No Ara in Japan. This is kind of a luxury top-end version of the Note. And the Note was here in America between 2012 and 2017, somewhere in there. I always thought it was a charming, attractive, well-designed vehicle. Don't know if it, I think it came in a five-speed manual, but I don't know if that five-speed manual came to the States. But what we're getting here is an e-power only Nissan No Ara which is a gorgeous looking little vehicle. And I think they should call it the Nissan Note Aria because it looks like a shrunken down version of the fully electric Aria, which I think is a very good looking vehicle. But I think this looks even a little bit better because the proportions are a little bit shrunk down. It's not uh, lifted awkwardly. It's definitely a hatchback. And we got a power bump here and all wheel drive on this Aura. So we're gonna head it over to the spreadsheet, of course. And we see on the Infinity and Nissan spreadsheet, uh, we have a lots of different things here that I've been hypothesizing about. But these versions over here are set in stone for the most part. We, we know a lot about them, uh, especially these no e-powers. And e-power is Nissan's hybrid system that drives fully electric. There's no uh, connection between the engine and the wheels. It's all done through a battery and as a mediator between the, the gasoline setup as well as the electric setup. So the car is always electric driven uh, and it's fueled by the battery, which is fueled by an internal combustion engine, which is fueled by gasoline. Anyways, I could have just shown that in a diagram, which took two seconds, but here's the new No Aura's e-power setup. And whether it's all wheel drive or a front wheel drive, I do believe you still get the full 134 horsepower and 221 pound feet of torque out of this setup. Um, but if you get it in all wheel drive, uh, the max horsepower out of that rear motor is 67 horsepower or 74 pound feet of torque which is immense. When we're, take, when we're comparing this uh, vehicle compared to something like the Prius all wheel drive, like that rear motor has maybe like seven or eight horsepower, if I remember right. Like it's very, very small, it has a ton of torque, not as much as this, but this vehicle is gonna drive way more dynamically and way more exciting than let's say its greatest competitor, which might be the Toyota Prius. 
hybrid all-wheel drive system. So a 221 pound-feet of torque and a small little hatchback that's instant would be a lot of fun. This thing would sh just rock it off the line. And 134 hor horsepower is decent. Remember, it's instant. And you're going to be getting at least 45 miles per gallon. I would love to have this little vehicle here in the United States. You guys can probably see how I'm excited how excited I am for it. And just the, the looks of it are gorgeous. Let me click on show all. You get two tone paint color options here. And it just looks like I said, a shrunken down version of the Aria. You get speakers in the headrest and the top trims like from Bose. I just think that's really cool. I love the drive select down here. It looks very modern. Uh, looks like we also have wood on the dash i love that tr that trim accentuated by cloth and stitching and looks like you also have some sort of bamboo ish like for a lighter wood option but i just think it's a gorgeous looking interior and exterior overall and i would just i would be licking my chops of this vehicle over here in the united states i love the practicality of this great fuel economy you see it next to the aria there it's like little brother big brother really cute and yes, I'll leave it there. We got one last news piece to talk about today. Subaru announces pricing on 2022 Ascent three row, uh, including a new Onyx edition trim level. Now Onyx edition, we'll talk a little bit more about it, but I want to give you guys an update on the Subaru Ascent. Sales are down on it compared to last year. And that is not a good thing because everyone else in the industry is just crushing it. Well, not everyone else, but like if you look at their closest rivals, they're doing really, really well compared to last year. But the Subaru Ascent has fallen to the very bottom of the three-row crossover market. It's It's been passed by the, the older Mazda CX-9 that I just reviewed. And that's really unfortunate because I do like the looks of the Ascent. The problem is, is the CVT transmission. I don't know. I can't really speak about the reliability, but I have heard some things about the issues with this vehicle. It's just really unfortunate, but we're going to get into... The Onyx edition here, which is new for 2022, comes in at 38K, uh, and it gives you 20-inch wheels, black badging. I do like that Onyx badge. I think it looks really cool. You get black finish exterior and interior elements, and the interior looks almost like carbon fiber. I don't know if it is, but it looks really good. And we get, of course, Subaru's StarTex synthetic leather. It's kind of like SoftTex from Toyota. And the Onyx Edition also has reverse automatic braking, power rear gate, heated steering wheel. That's really nice. Keyless access and push button start. Now there's one single option package for the Onyx for $2,200 that already gets the vehicle to around 40 k The package includes a panel moonroof, nav, and retract retractable car cargo cover. If you want to see all the Subaru Ascent packages and pricing, here we have it with the Onyx, Onyx package kind of being in the middle here so do you think this onyx edition is going to bring interest into the subaru ascent i don't have any confirmation on how many onyx editions they'll build i would assume probably you know one or two would come to each dealership but guys i'm going to end it there we're going to sum it up from the beginning mazda Toyota manufacturing. We don't know when the, the Crawl Cross is going to be produced from there, probably late this year. And we still don't know what kind of Mazda crossover is going to come out of there, but it is said to be using uh, Toyota's hybrid system. So we also have confirmation that the Crawl Cross will be getting a hybrid announcement early next year in 2022. The Nissan Note Aura, man. Great looking vehicle, only cost, I didn't go over price, it only cost about 23 to 27K when you convert it to US dollars. That sounds like a really good deal for a fun driving little vehicle. Subaru Ascent Onyx, hopefully can kindle in some life and some sales volume for Subaru with that model that's not doing so well for them. Maybe they can turn around with the Onyx, but guys, I'll see you guys down below. If you enjoyed the video, smash the like button, subscribe for more Japanese and Korean auto news. I am getting a Nissan Kicks today. For the first time, I'm getting a Nissan for review, so I have to thank you guys for that. I'll be getting Nissans, Subarus, uh, Kias, Hyundais, Genesis, all the brands I already talk about on the channel, I'll now be getting them hands-on to, to give you my impressions of these really excellent brands and vehicles from them. Guys, I'll end it there. See you in the next video.